Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a part one tutorial talking about the learning of Grease Pencil Node. Be aware that, that I'm also a learner of Grease Pencil Node and there is no menu for that. The only thing that I can say is that making mistake is almost a process of learning. So maybe a few days later I will disagree with what I'm saying right now, but at least that's what I know right now and what I'm thinking. Uh, firstly, I would like to discuss why I was thinking about uh, learning Grease Pencil Nodes. Uh, what can we do with that? I suppose there are lots of usage which are beyond my imagination, but as far as I know, some people use that to create a 2D style lights, the smoke, fire, and even water. Uh, personally speaking, I started to learn Grease Pencil Node because I needed to achieve the stock market, whatever. Uh, I can do that in After Effects. In fact, the majority of my work is in After Effects, not in Blender, uh, which also explains when I'm busy, I don't really touch Blender. However, to achieve what I want in After Effects using Shape Layer, if you understand the workflow, you can probably imagine lots of expressions, pick whip, duplication of layers, slider controls, if else statements, and offset of layers. I especially hate the part of offsetting layers. Um, that's why I never put that such kind of idea into options unless I really have to. What I mean to say is that the reason I started to use Grease Pencil Node is because I wanted to replace the usage of Shape Layer in After Effects. It does not mean the Shape Layer in After Effects is very bad, uh, but for particular animation that I want, I don't think it's worth to spend my time to type expressions and so on. So, since we decided to work with Grease Pencil Node, let's discuss how to use that. So now we're in Blender, where do we actually start to really learn Grease Pencil Node? What I suggest is, or what I did, is I'm just hitting Shift A, and you can see there is a horrible long list. Um, but I'm only going to concern about the Grease Pencil, and basically these are all the nodes that you're going to have to work with Grease Pencil. Actually, it's not really 100% yet, but you, it's a sort of the node that has been directly related to Grease Pencil. And you can see there is actually a thin line in between because it tells different um, group within this Grease Pencil node. And there is a kind of similarity in one room. For example, object input, layer info, frame info, stroke info, these are all kind of input or information from an existing Grease Pencil layer. For example, I can take a, a Grease Pencil Suzanne and I'm just uh, hitting this frame info, or uh, actually object input. So its actual name is called a Grease Pencil Object Input. And by hitting this Suzanne, I'm getting the layers. I have one layer which is called the lines and the other layer which is called the fill. So you can see kind of the difference. And if I hit W goes to viewer, you can see it's input, it's output two layers that we just see. One is called field, the other is called lines. Why the name is not in order? I never know. Does that actually change? Who knows? I don't actually understand how the way, the way it works. But um, basically this kind of idea. So you can do at your free time to look at all the nodes that you're going to have. And next question is how do I actually understand these nodes? One thing is that you don't necessarily need to have a menu actually, because even just looking at the name of this node, for example, we have a replicated grease pencil layer. Its function is of course to replicate a grease pencil layer. What should I, what else should I actually say? And the rest is that you input either a matrices or vector. So to replicate the Grease Pencil. Here, what I want you to understand is that if you actually know about animation nodes, you look at the, or, uh, the menu that does not include information for Grease Pencil nodes, or you have watched other tutorials, you will realize there is actually a similar node which is called the Replicate Spline. Actually, just the type of Replicate. And you can find there's a replicated grease pencil layer, replicated grease pencil stroke, replicated matrices, replicated spline, replicated vector. A replicated vector actually is my preset. So it does not actually natively exist. You don't necessarily worry about that, just forget about that. Come on. 
but you do have the replicated spine, the replicated matrices. So even if you don't, the menu does not include the replicated grease pencil layer, but you can look up for the same information from the replicated spine and the replicated matrices node from the menu. And also it's kind of very straightforward. You just match the color of the input and output sockets. When they are both orange, it means they can connect it together. Otherwise, the, the pink will not actually go through orange. Also, I would like to, to realize is uh, in animation nodes, if the input is a single input, then it's always more kind of a solid color. But if it's kind of multiple inputs, like the plural layers, then it becomes more kind of half opacity. Compare half opacity red compared to the single input. And this is the same as the matrices and the matri matrix and the matrices, the plural form. And so on and so forth. Uh, so this is basically the starting point. I don't actually think it's very difficult to understand because if I can understand it without a menu, you should probably be able to understand without a menu as well. But uh, another thing I would like to discuss is, so uh, assume we all know all these nodes, Let's, I can say that we have the object output and stroke and layer. What are their relationship and how can I actually finally create an interesting grease pencil from the grease pencil node? Uh, I'm going to shift A and go to the grease pencil and you do realize there is a stroke from points and a stroke from spline. These are the starting points. I'm going to use the uh, stroke from spline and I'll explain why essentially. Uh, but I will also pull out stroke from points. Okay, basically these two nodes. And even if I do not, I'm not familiar with the grease pencil node in animation nodes, but I'm familiar with the rest of animation nodes. So if it requires an input for the spline, then I'm just inputting a spline. So let's generate a spline object. So let's firstly get a distributed matrices. I'm going to set the type into spiral. So now I have a lot of points. Be aware that, uh, so let's take a spline from points. So now I'm connecting all these points and generate a spline so that I can connect up in output these splines to the to form the grease pencil stroke. Uh, be aware it's also possible you directly plug this vector into these points. Um, but sometimes I just uh, how should I say it's doable. Actually, it's the same, and it even it even saves one more node. But at some point, I sometimes just don't like it. Uh, this is my personal preference, but uh, essentially these are the same. Okay. I'll now explain further about what kind of things that you can do if you're using the, the spline way. And then, this is just a stroke. This is not yet a grease pencil object. And if you just take a grease pencil object, grease pencil object output, you can see its input requires a layer, but orange does not go to the red or pink. Unfortunately, you cannot. So it means there is something that it has to com convert the stroke into a layer. And if you hit a grease pencil and you can see there is a layer from a frame from stroke and a layer from frames. Basically, these are in sequence. So now I'm convert the orange into a dark red and then plug that into the kind of pink red. You can actually do that because it will have an automatic linkage to create a node which is called a grease pencil from frames. And this is actually a grease pencil layer from frames. And this is actually the same as the, the way that you can directly pull from the layer from frames. It's 100% the same. So now I output this target. And this is a grease pencil object. It may look like kind of spline, but it's a grease pencil object. And you can put a grease pencil materials. For example, we can do like this. I'm going to put that and put a fill. So I don't know what actually kind of things you generated, but this is kind of a, this is kind of idea. I don't know what you're going to actually use that for. 
but this is one aspect of that. Uh, and of course, you can directly plug this. You can do basically the same from the output from the grease pencil stroke form points and layer into layer. And you can try to work with the parameter. Basically, the pressure means the thickness of the stroke, and the strength means Tanakana for opacity. So when it's zero, it seems to kind of disappear. I can no longer see any strokes. It's almost formed like a kind of opacity. It's the I suppose it's the same as if you decrease this opacity. But if you decrease the opacity, I can still see the strokes. But if you decrease the strength, you just see nothing. So there are lots of things that you can potentially actually investigate. And even the hardness, what's actually the hardness? Yeah, you can see the softness of grease pencil. There are lots of things that they can potentially work with. I think it's kind of interesting to investigate. But uh, I want you to realize what's the relationship between the spine and the grease pencil. So I just showed you how to actually control the grease pencil and so on. Uh, I mean, control the grease pencil stroke and so on. But basically, if you convert the spline to grease pencil, many um, identity has been inherited, like the radius. And there is also a node which is called set GP stroke attribute, where you can actually link this into stroke and connect it to splines and many other things, hardness, material index, and so on and so forth. At some point, I personally, at some point, I personally prefer the spine form points route. It's just a personal preference. You don't necessarily agree with me, honestly speaking. It's simply just a personal preference. However, just to be aware that whichever way that you're going to use, the difference is just by one node. And in total, you still need to take at least three to four nodes to form a grease pencil object if you're using animation nodes. So it's actually a lot of nodes in between. And the question is, is there a way to actually change it or to actually optimize the usage of nodes? And that's another topic today where I'm going to create a node which is called a spline into grease pencil layer. It's actually pretty easy preset. So in this particular case, I just need a spline and I form a layer. And basically, this is still it. Which means I can use one node instead of these three nodes in total, which much shorten, uh, shorten the usage of nodes. Uh, which very much shorten the usage of nodes. Yeah, this is what I want to say. So to build this preset is extremely easy. You just put a group node. You put a group input node. I'm going to put a the spline socket into the input. And frame into the input. And you can choose a name. And now you also have uh, the blend method, so you can put that blend into the place as well. The reason I didn't do that, I think, is because at the moment I was trying to work with it, I still didn't yet have all these functions. It was in Blender 2.82 and so on. So you can and finally output the layer. And put a layer output. And basically this is done.
Uh, at some point, the DC is read. However, you do realize this is an input of a single spline. What if I'm actually generating multiple spline? For example, I'm replicating the spline for whatever reason. Maybe I'm replicating splines, so I'm generating a plural. And in such a case, then I need a, another socket, which is for the splines. And in such a case, I'm just duplicating these three layers. And in this, by hitting this plus icon, I'm generating a spline list. And putting the spline list into the place, and finally output the layers into the second one. And I can name this as a layers. And you can put the, basically the same inputs to the both of them. So that if you're actually trying to use a single spline, then you just put the single spline into sockets. If you would like to work with multiple splines, just put the multiple splines into the second socket. But the basically, they share the input. I think I'm going to update these presets so that it contains more function. Another thing I want you to realize is uh, even if you can control all these kind of things outside the entire whatever, but you, you don't have the choices to control the hardness and other things. So if you would like to have kind of more detailed functions or more detailed settings uh, what you may would like to do is that after the stroke to add a set stroke attributes or uh, set stroke stroke uh, gp stroke attributes and you can hit u and you can see in socket setting you have a lot of options including the cyclic but the in cyclic the cyclic also is things that's I don't think you need to worry about it because you can cycle it from the spline directly. I think only the hardness is something really you have to use the grease pencil node instead. But uh, finally, I think uh, it, it's your call to say which is which and the cap. Is the cap really important? I think uh, the rest is something that you can investigate and improve your presets in the future. I probably won't really go in detail. And you can change the 3D space. So there are actually lots of things that you can potentially work with that. I don't really would like to make this preset very long, though, but maybe you just have to. I'm not sure. And also be aware, even if I didn't create a preset for the stroke from points, but you can do that as well. And maybe it actually be better because it actually share the same functions, many, many same functions. So instead of working with spines with so many whatever stuff, you can make actually stroke more easily by directly plug this vector into points and then make it a cyclic. So these are all basically kind of method that you can potentially work with. And I think this is more or less it. I'll probably discuss more about the grease pencil in the future. But uh, I think these two days I just discussed basically the most important thing for you to start with grease pencil. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.